thank you for this awesome opportunity to be in your house, to be in your presence. We recognize, oh God, this great love you have for us. Hallelujah. It is so overwhelming, oh God. We thank you. Hallelujah. For what you're doing every day in our lives. Not just when we meet in this building, not just when we come together, but what you're doing every day, every hour, every minute, every second, oh God. We thank you, even when we're not conscious of your presence. Even you already promised us, you said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. So even though we might not even be conscious, you're there and you're working on our behalf. You're causing all things to work together for good. Hallelujah. Your plan for our life, you're causing it to manifest right in front of us. Hallelujah. You're making good of your word. Hallelujah. All the promises of God that are in you, yes. And we say amen. So tonight, we just bless you for another opportunity to hear even more, to worship you, to praise you, to receive from you, and to be blessed by you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Would you bless him tonight? Come on and bless him. He's a magnificent God. Hallelujah. He's a magnificent God. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to his name. Amen. <laughs> well, bless God. We thank God for you being here tonight. Amen. We thank God for our Facebook Live family. Would you put your hands together and welcome them tonight? God bless you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, they're clapping because they're excited about you being in here with us. You're here even though you're not physically here. You're going to hear the word of God. We do invite you to come and be with us in person. Amen. God bless you. We are being safe. The house of God is the safest place where you can be. Amen. There is no safer place. Hallelujah. And we invite you to come and Worship with us in the sanctuary, amen. It's awesome. And we believe that you will receive a special blessing, amen, as a result of meeting together like the Word of God tells us, not to forsake the assembling, amen. So we want to make sure, amen, we follow the Word of God, we follow the instructions that God has given the church because we know that's where all the benefits, amen, start to manifest. So we bless God for you. We put our hands together again for them. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, we just thank God for another opportunity to be in his house. Amen. We don't take it for granted. And we thank God that we're here tonight. And we thank God for what he's going to do. We thank God for what he's going to reveal. Hallelujah. For what he's going to say to us. I prayed, and I say it a lot, I say it most of the time, that you came to the house of God with an earnest expectation that something good is going to happen to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God, amen, listen, you cannot be disappointed. Hallelujah. You cannot be ashamed. And God has something for you. Amen. amen. Why would he tell us to meet? Why would God tell us to not forsake the assembly? There's, there's got to be something that happens when we come together that does not happen when you don't come together. Are you listening to me? So we have to make sure we're looking for that. Amen? We might can't identify it, but we know it's good because God is good. And he's good all the time. Is that right? Tonight I want to talk to you about righteousness. The truth that never changes. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, I've been laboring. Amen. I ain't talking about bad laboring. I'm talking about some good laboring. Amen. Laboring, trying to figure out, Lord, how I'm going to talk about all this in an hour. Amen. He said, you just put it on paper. I'll, I'll work the rest of it. Amen. Righteousness. The truth that never changes. Now, you know, and I know too, there's a whole lot of things in your life and my life that start one way and end up another. The truth can change, amen, or should I say what looks like the truth, amen. It can change in a matter of seconds. 
I talked about it a little bit last time we was together, amen, and I talked about things, amen, that start one way or sometimes the way people feel, amen, they feel one way and then all of a sudden they have a change of heart and, and I talked about those things, amen, that come sometimes in our lives and they cause pain. And we talked about the source of that pain. We talked about the thief, if you would. We identified the thief. Jesus said he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we identified, amen, that the thief is behind those things that we have lost. Because God is not a taker. I said God is not a taker. Huh? Huh? And Jesus said it in John, amen, praise God. And, you know, sometimes we, re sometimes we read the Bible, we, re we read it religiously, and we have to make sure that we read it relationship, read it like a love letter. Are you listening to me? Because hey, he loves you. The Bible said it. The Bible said God is love. So if he wrote you a letter, it's got to be a love letter. <laughs> Come on, man. If he wrote your let's got a love letter, and, and don't you dare, because I remember when you was in school, and you take that little letter, that little boy stuck in your book, and you take that thing, and you have, listen, you take it everywhere you go. It be in every bag, you have it everywhere you go. Read it 25,000 times a week. Uh, it won't say nothing. Come on. Now you got a real love letter that can change your life. You got a love letter that's able, amen, to do things that nothing else can't do. How dare you not read it all the time? And how dare you not be excited about it when you read it? Amen. So we have to make sure, amen, praise God, that we are embarking on this truth that causes things in our life to change. But righteousness... That truth will never change. And we talked about what God said to us, amen, when he told us in the word of God. He says, listen, no weapon formed against you would prosper. He says, in every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You, capital Y, meaning him. He says, this is the heritage of the saints of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So he told us that we have a righteousness that comes from him. Now, he, this, listen, this was a prophetic word, amen, that we didn't totally, we meaning them, they didn't totally understand in the Old Testament. This was a prophetic word that Jesus was going to come make good of. Are you listening to me? It's an everlasting righteousness, the Bible calls it. Are you listening to me? And... Listen, he says, their righteousness is from me, saith the Lord. It's not theirs, it's from me. If it was theirs, they could lose it. It ain't theirs. It didn't come from them. I said it didn't come from them. If it didn't come from them, amen, praise God, it ain't by the same rules as if it did come from them. So tonight I want to continue to show you things about righteousness because I said before, that is the platform from which your understanding causes your faith to be able to grow. I'm going to show you some critical scriptures that we glaze over. And I, I'm, I'm going to ask you to be very attentive to not do that tonight and to look at the word of God. Matter of fact, to look at every word that we read. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So that means every word that God has spoken has life in it. Are you listening to me? And we need to make sure, amen, we don't just casually and haphazardly read the Word of God. Amen. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big on this thing about, you know, you, you're trying to, you feel good about yourself because you read a whole lot, but you're flying through it. Nah. <laughs> we talking about God here, man. No, 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 no. So we don't, we want to make sure, amen, that we don't casually read this. Now, you know, right in the middle Right in the midst of signs, evil signs, symptoms, things that appear to be real at that moment, you still have a truth 
that never changes. Now, I, I need you to just take your time and digest that now because we all go through this. Signs, symptoms, diagnosis. I mean, there, there's things that happen. And right in the middle of that ugliness, there is a truth that never changes. That's contrary to what that sign. That's contrary to that symptom. That's contrary to that doctor's report. That's contrary, amen, praise God, to what the evil one has attacked you with. There is a truth that does not change. And the enemy does everything he can to make you think that truth is not real for you. You read it, you've read it in the Bible, you know it's there. But he does everything he can and he uses different strategies based on who you are and what you know to make you think that that truth is not yours. There's something you didn't do to have it. There's something you didn't do why you don't have it. There's some reason you did something wrong. There's something wrong with you. That's why that truth does not show up in your life. But that truth, my friend, never changes because God's word doesn't change. <laughs> it don't change. I know you change. Huh? You up today, down tomorrow. That's not an insult. That's the truth. You know you ain't the same every day. Come on, man. You got to fight through it sometimes. I know I do. They, I have to fight through it, man. I got to fight. Come on. I got to encourage myself. In there. I don't wake up every day on the mountaintop. And if you do, you're lying. I said it. <laughs> no, man. They days you wake up, boy, you got to fight. Some of you, come on, they, someday you don't even feel like you're saved. Till about 12, somewhere around 12, you start feeling saved again. <laughs> come on, man, you know what I'm talking, you feel ugly. Irritated, agitated, stuff ain't going right. Huh? Everybody on the highway driving slow. You ever been out there saying, everybody's slow but you. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> huh? No, it just, you, it, you, and you realize, I'm not resting in the Lord. I'm not resting in the Lord. I'm not resting. Have you ever been, like, just really tired, and you got so much stuff in front of you that still has to be done, and you are mentally and physically tired? And if you don't find a way to bring God on the scene on your own, nothing's going to happen. But as soon as you bring him on the scene through prayer, through praise, through worship, all of a sudden things change. Listen, people, I'm talking about what I know because I've been doing this for a minute because I know what it is. I promise you to work and still have to do things. And I promise you, listen, if I was trying to do it in my own power, uh-uh, would not happen. So I know you understand what I'm saying. Those of you, amen, praise God, has been saved for a minute. And, 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 and you understand that the things of God, amen, right in the middle of these conflicting signs, there is a truth that doesn't change. And we have to find out and know what it is. This truth, man, is eternal. It's an eternal truth. Amen. And it will always, listen to me, it will outlast all of those evil facts. <laughs> Y'all need to hear me. Because it's a fact. When you get a letter in the mail and something's in foreclosure, that's a fact. It's an evil fact, but it's a fact. It's a fact when you go to the doctor and you get an evil report and the doctor tells you something that you don't want to hear. And it's a fact. But I'm trying to tell you that the word of God will outlast evil facts. Matter of fact, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. The word of God will change evil facts. The word doesn't change, but it'll change facts. Evil facts can be changed. Are you listening to me? We have to know this. I mean, we, this is something we have to know. And the way that this happens, listen, listen, the way it happens is you have to find the truth in the gospel. You have to find the truth in the gospel. 
Now, I'm going to tell you something that's very interesting, which we've read before. We're going to read again, and we're going to see what the Holy Spirit shows us that maybe we didn't pay attention to. In Galatians chapter 1, I want you to go there. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. And I thought about something that I heard Bishop say. Amen. Because in this time that we've been going through, amen, we've been saying, you know, this and that and that and this, and some of the this is not that, some of the that ain't this, and some of it ain't what it ought to be with some of our other churches, if you would, sometimes. So we need to make sure that we know and we listen to what we're supposed to be listening to. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Listen to me. The Bible says in verse 6, this is the Apostle Paul who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. The Bible says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ. Now, if I had a Bible I could write in, I would underline the grace of Christ. Comma, to a different gospel. To a different gospel. So he's saying, he's marveling that you or they have moved away from this gospel of Christ, this gospel, this grace of Christ, to a different gospel. Watch the comma. Very important. Verse 7 which is not another. So you're going to hear me make terms tonight, and I'm going to say stuff like the true gospel. Because it's obvious that there is another gospel, but it's not another gospel. It ain't true. Paul says, I marvel that you turn so soon away to another gospel that's not another. There ain't but one gospel. I submit to you, we better make sure we know what it is. It was serious enough for the Holy Spirit to have the Apostle Paul write about it. Now watch this. He says, he says, verse 7, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ, okay? We got some interchangeable terms. Because he said, first of all, the grace of Christ. He says, I'm marveling that you, 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 so soon, you turned away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ. And then he called it to another gospel. So he made a comparison and then he turned around and said, which is not another, so we know that other gospel is not really the true gospel. But he says, also, there's some that want to trouble you, and they want to pervert the gospel of Christ. So the gospel of Christ is the grace of Christ, which could be called the gospel of grace. It's all interchangeable terms. And then verse 8 and 9, which you've heard me say so many times, as a warning, because the Apostle Paul gave it by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as a warning. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, that's pretty serious, ain't it? Preach any other gospel, say, 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 now I need you to catch this, even though it's not another for the sake of understanding, he's still calling other things gospel, even though it ain't the true gospel. Because if it ain't the grace of Christ, if it's not the gospel of Christ, it's not the true gospel. Are, are you with me so far? Watch this now. He, he, so, so he says, he, he's warning, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. That's pretty serious. New Testament curse. You don't see that much in New Testament. Watch this. Verse 9. 
as we have said before, so now I say again. Okay, I'm saying it again. Stuff is real serious when the Holy Spirit have you saying it twice. If anyone preaches, and did you get the word? Preaches. No, 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 no. <laughs> you missed that. Now, I ain't talking about homeboy that's in the club cutting people with a switchblade. No, no, no. He ain't preaching nothing. Preaches, that sounds like it's people that's in church. Okay. If you say the word preacher, where do you normally find a preacher at? And preachers do what? Preach. He says if anybody else preaches. Now listen to me. I understand you can preach without being a preacher. I got that. But the warning is going out to people that preach another gospel. You might not have a title. Irrelevant. If you're preaching another gospel, this warning is going out to you. Watch this. If anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be a curse. That's a double curse. That's a double curse. Sound pretty serious, don't it? I said sound pretty serious, don't it? Yeah. This ain't nothing to play with. You got to know what you're talking about. I, you'd be better off keeping your mouth shut if you don't know what you're talking about. Because it has to be the gospel. Because the gospel does something that other things don't do. So the devil, with his sneaky self, who is always trying to pervert. Pervert means to change something into something else. So the devil tries as an attack for believers, he tries to get you to preach something that is from the Bible, but it's not the gospel. Well, I thought everything from the Bible was the gospel. Now, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you tonight because we can't interchange terms that's not interchangeable. Just because you're reading the Bible, that don't mean it's the gospel. I'm going to give you a hint. If I'm reading the law, the law is not the gospel. That was no amens. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to give you another chance. If I'm reading the law, the law is not the gospel. Say amen and save yourself because I'm getting ready to read it and you're going to know you're wrong. At least if you say amen, you can fake it. Watch this. So, so, so then, watch this. So then I have to make sure, amen, that I understand what the gospel is and what the gospel is supposed to do. I'm going to say it like this. I need to understand what the true gospel is. Now that we know Paul has identified another gospel that ain't really another. So that, mean, that means, according to Paul, they people preaching another gospel that really ain't the gospel. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. That was back then, but it don't happen now, do it. You deceived if you don't think it still happened. It still happened today. That's why it's in the Bible to warn you. It's still happening. A lot. Amen. All right, watch this. Let's turn to Romans chapter 1. We're going to verse 16. I'm going slow on purpose because I need for you to get this. Getting this helps you stay out of trouble. Because you remember what Paul said? It was a double curse if you preach another gospel. Man, you don't want to do that to yourself. That's, that's kind of like if you condemn yourself. You know what we were talking about? He that justifies the wicked and he who condemns the, the just. Yeah, and we got Christians that condemn themselves, meaning I don't believe that the blood did what it did. You don't believe it. So you get caught up in the condemnation. Even though the Bible tells you there is therefore now no condemnation for those that's in Christ Jesus, but the enemy, he does everything he can to bring condemnation. 
And when you receive condemnation, it's because you don't understand the gospel. Come on now, I'm, I'm, I'm going slow on purpose. If you're receiving condemnation, it's because you don't understand the gospel. Jesus said to the woman, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Don't, does not anyone accuse you? None, Lord. Neither do I condemn you. Now go and sin no more. He gave her the gift of no condemnation. He didn't condemn her, which empowered her to go and sin no more. You get that, lady. I hope you got it already. You're just so overly excited that it's hard for you to get excited about it again. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Watch this. The Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Stop. Didn't we see that term before in Galatians? The gospel of Christ was in Galatians chapter 1, verse 7. When he was talking about there's not another but some want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Okay, so now we see this term showing up in Romans chapter 1. Huh? He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Please get this. For it is, definition coming up, definition coming up, for it is, definition coming up, definition coming up. I feel like I'm in class. I have to do that to help my children. For it is <laughs> the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. So we identify the group of people that it is something for. It's the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. So if you don't believe, guess what? Tough luck. Watch this. For the Jew first and also the Greek. Verse 17. Now this is where I really need your undivided attention. So when I say undivided attention, that means you can't be thinking about what you're going to eat when you get home tonight. You can't be thinking about what you got to do when you go to work tomorrow. You can't be thinking about what your honey baby told you before y'all came. None of that. Because all that's divided attention. I need your undivided. You'd be surprised how many people don't get that until I break it down like that. Huh? My mind could be in two places at one time. Honestly, no. Your mind is somewhere else and your body is here. And the devil love it. Okay, watch this. Verse 17. For in it, in it what? The gospel of Christ. That's what we're talking about. That's the subject. Watch what happens. The righteousness of God is revealed I got to stop right there for a minute for in it in what the gospel of Christ the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith so that other gospel that Paul was talking about which really wasn't another obviously do not reveal the righteousness of God from faith to faith so it don't classify as the gospel because it does not reveal the righteousness of God. This is why I keep telling you, just because you're reading the Bible don't mean you're reading the gospel. You got to rightly divide the word. Rightly divide the word of truth. Watch this now. Sometimes Jesus was not talking. Do you realize that? <laughs> oh boy. I ain't planning on going down this rabbit hole. Do you, do you really realize that Jesus, you do realize that Israel rejected Jesus, right? So then, let, let me get this right. Okay, if they reject him, that means they won't save, right or wrong? Uh, you, you scared to answer. All right, so they rejected him. So who do you think a lot of that preaching was to? It was to people that rejected him. Did you reject him? Those of you that say, I'm born again, hallelujah, thank God, I'm tongue talking, Bible caring, Holy Ghost shouting. Did you reject him? I'm saved, Pastor. So you didn't reject him. That's the answer, right? Uh-huh. So then if you read something that he's talking to somebody that rejected him, and you read it and you receive it, you that didn't reject him, 
Do you think that's actually for you? You scared to answer? And I understand why. Because that's called religion. I'm trying to help you tonight. Because that's why some of you are going to stay poor. Because religion is going to choke you. And I'm, I'm going to do everything I can, amen, to try to bring you out. But I, got, I can only do what I can do. Because you have to believe. Remember what it said about to him who believes? See, I can't believe for you. Huh? I can intercede, man. I can pray. And ask, but you have to be the one to believe. Because if I could believe, you know, if we could believe for each other, man, there'd be a whole lot more people going to heaven. You got to believe for yourself. To him who believes. So the righteousness of, listen, listen, the gospel, the gospel, it says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. So if you preach in the gospel, the righteousness of God has to be being revealed. Or you ain't preaching the gospel. Come on, read your Bible. If the righteousness of God is not, that's why you hear me say all the time, when I'm in the Old Testament, I have to show you Christ. Because then I can help you see the righteousness of God. Love the Old Testament but I got to be looking for Christ. Okay, stay with me. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So those that are justified, those that's been made right with God, they live, they exist, they thrive by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Are you listening to me? There's a whole lot of people, please hear what I'm getting ready to say by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This ain't in my notes. There's a whole lot of people unsaved right now because they have not had the gospel preached to them. But can I say something to you that's disturbing? They have had something preached to them, but it won't the gospel. See, what? Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. The, listen, listen, the gospel reveals the righteousness of God. Guess what the law reveals? It reveals man's failures. The gospel reveals the righteousness of God. But the law reveals man's failures. You ain't going to feel good reading the law, honey, because I ain't got to read but a little while and you're going to get caught up because when you break one, you broke them all. See, the, the, the gospel reveals the righteousness of God. It's the gospel of Christ. It's the gospel of grace. The grace of Christ. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through. Come on. The law was given by Moses, a man. Are you listening to me? But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. He delivered it himself. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So then when you call yourself preaching the gospel, next time you get somebody hemmed up in Walmart, <laughs> make sure you're revealing the righteousness of God instead of the sins of the person. Watch this, watch this. The pastor, if they're doing something wrong, what I'm supposed to do, not say nothing about it? No, 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 no. What you do is you tell them what Christ did about it. Remember the woman? You remember the woman? Remember the woman? Where are those accusers of yours? Do not anybody accuse you? Neither do I. She... Do you know what this woman had did? Do you know what she was accused of? They said they caught her in the very act. Okay, wait a minute. This be God. This be the son of God. Huh? Hair like wool. Eyes flaming like fire. Feet like bronze. This be Jesus. And he just let her go like that? 
<laughs> Boy, I love when you look religious. I love it. You know why? You know why? You know why? You know why? No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, woman, where's the accuser? Yo, where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Nobody could accuse her because nobody didn't qualify to accuse her. Let him who is without sin cast the first stone. They would if they could, but they couldn't. He could if he would, but he wouldn't because he ain't going to do it. You know why he's not going to do it? Because she repented. Listen, listen, he didn't condemn her. He empowered her in order for her to be able to go and sin no more. He gave her the gift of no condemnation. Now she was able to go and sin no more. Do you know how many people right now that would love to be able to go and sin no more, but they don't know there's a way out because all they hear is what they do wrong. Uh, if you telling them only what they do wrong, are you revealing the righteousness of God? Hey, you scared answer. You're scaredy cats tonight. <laughs> that right there ought to tell you something, you scared answer. Amen. Praise God. That ought to tell you something right there. No, 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 no. You are not revealing the righteousness of God if all you're doing is telling people what they do wrong. You got to be, the gospel reveals the righteousness of God. Huh? Yeah. Jesus, the answer to your sin problem. Jesus is his name. Emmanuel. Amen. And you know, praise God, all the names of God, every last one of them. Do you realize all of them is wrapped up in one name called Jesus? Do, do you, you do realize that, don't you? Now, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, Jehovah, Rafa, Jehovah, Jehovah. Now, ain't nothing wrong with that because you get specific. Yeah, I got it. But when you say Jesus, all of it is in. Because he all of those. Jesus is every one of those. Huh? Rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. That sounds good. Amen. Praise God. It's just, come on. Bright and morning star. Hallelujah. Oh, that's Jesus. So for those of you that have been in condemnation because you couldn't remember all the names, I just let you, gave you a way out. Deliverance. Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Jesus. <laughs> that's your way out. Jesus. I like that man. He laying by there. Who is that coming? He blind, he can't see. That's Jesus. Jesus! He start hollering. Jesus! They run over there talking about be quiet. And they would know what they did that for. Oh no. Jesus! He got louder. I'm sitting up here blind all this long time, and I hear about a man from Galilee that's been opening up blind eyes, and I hear him coming down the road, and I hear the commotion, and you trying to tell me to be quiet. I might not never get this chance again. No, I ain't going to to be no quiet. I'm going to call his name even louder because it can't get no worse. The only thing that can happen is it get better. I can end up with, listen, I can end up being able to see. I can end up not being poor no more. I can end up healed from this affliction. Jesus! Because I ain't ashamed of the gospel. I ain't ashamed of the gospel. Because I ain't ashamed of the gospel. You kidding me? He cried even the more. Come on, man. You ever been to church and it seemed like a funeral? I'm just asking a question. I'm just... You, you ever been in a church building and it seemed cold and indifferent? Nobody having a good time? Ain't no shouting and pray. You know, come on. Ain't no, ain't no shouting and praising and happy and hilarious about God. It's like you're waiting to see something happen to somebody. Something bad. You know, because somebody came in and they in sin and they about to be judged. Y'all tough. Y'all like the disciple. 
Lord, you want us to call down fire from heaven like Elijah did? I don't, it's like we read that stuff and we don't get that that's us. We, we don't get it's us. That, that's us. They meant well. They really did. They meant well. They meant well. He rebuked them. You don't know what man of spirit you of. Son of man, I didn't come to destroy men's lives. But when he left, we showed up and said, we'll do it. You ain't got to. We got it. You can't do it, people. I'm, I'm telling you. This, this is the time right now. You need to be revealing the righteousness of God every time you get a chance. You should be revealing the righteousness of God every time you get a chance. First of all, because I don't want to take the chance that I'm preaching any other gospel. Some of y'all look scared. Go on and repent and get it over with. You look like you're terrified. I, I ain't preaching something going to send you to hell. I'm trying to help you, amen? Come on, man. Hallelujah. This is like a journey, amen, for, for well, well, listen what it says. It, it, it says. it says, for in it, talking about the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. In other words, you get revelation. That's where you get revelation. About what? The righteousness of God. That righteousness is a free gift. How about that? You and I, none of us, we can't do enough to become the righteousness of God on our own. Can you see how frustrating that would be for a man or a woman to think they can? To think they can be good enough to be made righteous, the righteousness of God on their own? You kidding me? You can't do enough. Because you and I were born in sin. I said you and I were born in sin. And the gospel, the good news about the anointed one and his anointing, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of grace, it came with a serious price. God had to give up his only son to die for us to offer up his body as a sacrifice so that you and I could be, listen, redeemed, bought back, and returned to our rightful place with God. So this won't cheat just because it didn't cost you nothing. It ain't cheap. It wasn't cheap. God had to give up his son. That was the only way it could happen. There's no other way that a man could come to God other than through what? Jesus. There is no other way that a man could come to God. Well, I just don't know about that preacher because let me tell you something. I've seen some of your little Christian friends, and I've seen them. Some of them are just as nasty, and, 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 and you wouldn't even know they're Christian. And then on Sunday, they end up just a hollering and a jumping. And so I can tell you, if that's all I'm going to get, and I act like that Monday through Saturday, then I think I'd just rather stay where I'm at. Well, I tell you what you do. You go ahead and stay where you at, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be over here and holler. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to be hollering. Because I'm hollering because when I did mess up on Thursday, I found out that Jesus had already paid the price for me messing up on Thursday. So that's why I'm hollering on Sunday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, going to holler some more. You know why? Because I found out that he did something for me because he already knew that I was going to mess up on Monday. He already knew I had a problem that was going to find me on Tuesday. And he already hung, listen, bled and died. He gave up the ghost. He already did it. And I know that I'm saved because of him. That's why I call him Savior. Mm. But you, my friend, who do the same thing and don't call him Savior, you're going to have to pay for yours, whereas mine is paid for. Which one you rather be? Huh? Mine paid in full. Matter of fact, it's an overpayment. Yours is sitting there waiting on you to give an account. 
which one do you want to be? I'm just saying. Huh? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, really quick. Verse 21. Wow. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him who knew no sin. That's right. Jesus himself knew no sin. He did no sin, neither was any sin found in him. He knew no sin. He was made to be sin. He was made to be sin for us. That we might be made righteous. Wow, that's serious. Huh? So the righteousness we receive is a gift. See, <laughs> I love it when, you know, you, you're, you're talking to people about Jesus. Some of y'all call it witnesses instead of being a witness. And they start talking about all the stuff they did wrong. Don't you realize that's a setup? Because the more stuff they did wrong, the greater this is going to be when I show them that somebody else paid the price and all you got to do is receive what he did and now he's going to change your life and all of a sudden you're going to belong to him and he's going to, listen, he's going to empower you to live this other life. So the more you've done, that's, that's why when they sit there and they got this list of stuff they've done, let them keep talking. Don't try to stop them. They, oh God, they got so much. No, no, the more the better. He who is forgiven much loves much. See, much ain't a problem with Jesus. Much is only a problem with us. Ain't no problem with Jesus. You ought to be able to tell that by the people he hung out with. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. We don't get it. Ask Martha. Come on, man. So then, so then, so then we got to get the mindset that whenever we see a Zacchaeus, he was a tax collector. And let me tell you, man, in Bible days, they were atrocious. You want to talk about evil? Okay. When we see a Zacchaeus, man, who comes in contact with Jesus, and all of a sudden, after his encounter with Jesus, he now has a heart. First of all, he obviously been changed. And he's trying to, listen, he's trying to undo these bad things he's done. You see fruit with his repentance. You can tell this man been changed. You can tell it. We, we can't be afraid of the Zacchaeus. We, 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 we can't be afraid of the women at the well and the woman caught in the very act. We, see, and a lot of us are. You don't say you are, but you are. You're afraid to be caught talking to them. Pastor might ride by. <laughs> Not me, somebody else's pastor. Because if I ride by and see you out there talking to somebody that's unsaved, amen, pray God, say, by time. I mean, no, I wouldn't say that, but anyway. No. Uh-uh. You, 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 see, see you, you remember what the Pharisees kept saying about Jesus? This man eateth and drinketh with sinners. 
Remember how they kept saying that? I want to take you to, I want to take you to, we ain't going to read it, but I want to, I want to take you back to the prodigal son. Look at how the wayward son came home. And look at how the wayward son was treated. There was something about him coming home that ought to get your attention because he came home. Listen, listen, listen. You know what it reminds me of, Bishop? Remind me of a hero's welcome. You know, the boys come home from fighting, you know, people cheer. Yeah, 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 yeah. He done took daddy's money, left in a disrespectful way, squander it on riders living. And he's now coming home, smelling like a pig pen, broke as a joke. And he's coming home with a line he got made up that maybe he can at least be given a job as good as one of the higher servants. And the father won't hear in none of it. Well, well, I mean, what, did that, what does that mean to you as you sit here? Tell me, uh, 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 tell me what's revealed in that story. I tell you what, the righteousness of God is revealed. It, it, it definitely ain't, listen, he definitely ain't highlighting what he did wrong. The righteousness of God is revealed. Gotta hear it, man. He, Here's God running. He see his son. Him that was lost. Grabbed him and twirled him and kissed him. Throw a party. Killed a fatty cat. Put a robe on him. Put a ring on his finger. And sandals on his feet because he's no, he's not a slave, he's a son. The righteousness of God was revealed. Good breaks. But now let's look at his older brother. Let's see what's revealed there. Hey, what's, what's all that noise up there? Oh, your brother, he came home. Really? So what's all the noise? Oh, your father's throwing a party. He killed a fatted calf. It's a big celebration. Really? Don't look like the righteousness of God being revealed in the way he acted. I wonder what gospel he was preaching. Because his gospel says, all this time I've been here, I ain't never transgressed one of your commandments. But you ain't never, you ain't never killed a fatty calf, invited my friends over. I ain't transgressed not one of your commandments, self-righteousness. But this son of yours, who don't squander your money with rod is living, and look at him. He stinks. He comes home and you treat him like this. Is that the righteousness of God being revealed? I'm just trying to help you. Because see, this is what happens when you just keep pointing out the person's sin, man. <laughs> what they did wrong, what they did wrong, this is what you did wrong, this is what you did wrong. Uh, most of the time they know what they did wrong and it's okay to tell them, but you got to tell them in route to showing them Jesus. That's how you approach the Old Testament. You show them Jesus. Don't tell me I'm wrong because Jesus himself on the road to Emmaus, what did he say to them people? Come on. He helped them understand. All of that pointed to me. 
That's why their hearts burn. The righteousness of God is why. Let me tell you something, man. Let me, let me promise you. And you're going to be talked about. So if you're afraid of that, you might as well get out of this game right now. There are going to be churches that will talk about you. Oh, yeah, no down there. You can do anything you want to, Bill Oasis. Anything you want to do. Oh, they're going to talk about you. So, say, I'm telling some of you right now that's a little queasy. You know what queasy is, right? <laughs> you ever been on a high building or something, and then you get to the edge and you kind of feel a little queasy? You get a little queasy when people talk about you. There ain't going to be some accusations. You kidding me? See, and if that's your focus, man, you're going to struggle. See, because you got to look at Jesus and what he did. They talked about him. He be the son of God. And they talked about him as far as the people that he ate with, drank with, was around. He came to call sinners to repentance, not the righteous. Religion wants you to always hang around righteous people. Watch this. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. I got to get ready to close real quick. Man, I have so much more I want to talk about. <laughs> What's this? Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more, say much more, they which receive, all right, that's a special category of people again, because they that don't receive ain't going to qualify for what we're getting ready to read. They that receive qualify. They that don't receive ain't going to qualify. Watch this. They which receive abundance of grace, abundance of grace, it's specified what kind, abundance of grace, abundance of grace, and of the gift of righteousness. Two things, abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. And now guess what happens to them? Shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. You kidding me? Now you kidding me? Reign in life? Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. reign in life. Reign. Sound like something royal, don't it? Mm -hmm. Reign in life. Because if you reigning, you hear me say it before, poverty ain't reigning. If you reigning, sickness ain't reigning. If you reigning, bad relationships ain't reigning. Reign in life. That's the answer to receiving. Abundance of grace and the gift. So obviously, if the Holy Spirit said it like that, that means there's some that's not receiving. Maybe they receive one and don't receive the other one. He said abundance of grace. People are afraid of that term. Because for some reason, they think somebody getting away with something. I wish God could give you about a 15-second hmm, dream. And he could take you to the courtyard when Jesus was being scourged. Just for about 15 seconds. You don't look at them Hollywood shows so much, you think that's what Jesus looked like. When he was scared, that ain't what he looked like. And, and we don't really understand that God's, listen, listen, listen. God's wrath, all of it was poured out. God's wrath about sin was poured out on Jesus' body. All of it was exhausted on Jesus, the man. Mm hmm so it wouldn't have to be on you. And because he's Jesus, he was an overpayment. That's why I say much more. If by one man, Adam, I'm going to 
I'm going to say that and then I'm going to close. By one man, Adam, 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 one man, one man, one man, Adam. If all of that craziness is by one man, Adam, how much more are we receiving by the real man, Jesus? We place more emphasis on what Adam has done than what Jesus has done. People, I ain't telling you that you're winking at sin. No, I'm trying to get you to talk about the answer for sin. I'm not trying to get you to act like sin don't exist. I'm trying to get you to talk about the one that came to take away sin. It's the very opposite. I'm trying to get you to focus on the answer to sin. Not act like it don't exist. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. So, even though I didn't finish tonight, I want you to think about this one thing, amen, and this is what I want to leave with you. What type of gospel are you preaching? If you preach, talk, speak. I ain't talking about no platform like being in a pulpit either. At work, in the break room, in the community, at the, you know, at the gym. What are you displaying to other people? Are you revealing the righteousness of God? Because then, if you are, you are speaking about the gospel. If you're not, you're speaking about another gospel. And the church said, Here's what I want you to do tonight. I want you to believe that if you've been in error, that God loves you so much and he knows your heart, that he will reveal to you your error so that you can get on board and get in line with what God wants us to do. Because you and I, are an extension of God in the earth. Are you listening to me? His mouthpiece, his hands in the earth. It's you and I that's standing in front of sinners and God, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is telling us, trying at least if we'll listen, what to say to them, being led by the Spirit. Amen? So it's important that you get out of the way Listen to me good. Get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Stop thinking you know. I don't even think I know. Stop thinking you know. You don't know nothing unless he reveal it to you. He'll tell you what to say and when to shut up. You got to hit nobody with the head with a whole Bible. You'd be surprised. God will use you, but you got to put your, but God ain't going to take and use you to hurt somebody. And you, 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 you can, you know, act religious as you want to. He ain't going to do that. He loved people. Listen, man, you kidding me? He sent his son to die for these people. Amen. There's people that think they're doing God a favor and they're persecuting his people. Saul, Saul, why persecute him? Thou me. Can't tell Paul, man, kid me. I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it's sad if we look at these people who made these mistakes and think that we can't do the same thing. I want to pray for you in the sanctuary along with the ones that's listening to us by Facebook Live. I just want to pray over you that God will anoint you, he, he, that your ears would be in tune to hear yourself. And if you're in error, that you would follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and allow him to lead you to the places he wants you to go. Because God is concerned about souls. And he wants to use you. He that wins souls is wise. But you can't do it on your own and your own way. 
Are you listening to me? I want to pray over you tonight. Father, we bless you and thank you for your presence. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, and the love that was displayed on Calvary's cross. We all, Father, are in error at one point or another because we're still in this human body and we miss it sometimes. We thank you for Jesus who went to Calvary's cross for every time we would miss it. But more tonight, Lord God, we ask you to help us not to be in error when we talk or speak to people. Help us to understand the difference between revealing the righteousness of God and the errors of men or their sin. And help us to know exactly how to use your word in order that people would see the goodness and the love that you have displayed through your son, Jesus. We thank you tonight for saving us. But we tonight will not be satisfied until we do exactly what you want us to do in helping others to know you. We thank you for it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Would you bless him tonight? Amen. Those of you that's watching us by Facebook Live or whatever platform you're watching, I want you to be encouraged. And I don't want you to beat yourself up, amen. That's what the devil would love to do. Yeah, you know, you messed up that old girl in the break room the other day because all you did was talk about what she did wrong. Well, I can tell you this. The Holy Spirit knows how to tell you to correct that. Amen. You don't have to come up with nothing on your own. That's the good thing about being filled with the Holy Spirit. You pray and ask God, Lord, help me, because I feel like I might have messed that up. Tell me what to say, if anything, and I'll do it. And God knows your heart. If you have a heart to do his will, he's going to help you. Amen? We love you. We're here for you. We invite you to come and be with us in person. But until we meet again on Sunday morning, we love you and we exalt our holy God together and we believe that one day we all will be in this sanctuary and we'll be worshiping and praising God. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you on Sunday morning. Amen. Well, God bless you. Jump up.